Hey everybody, it's me, Super Paul Games. Welcome back to Stillwater Creek. I'm the Scottish teacher who's in Canada. Already, I'm already in the classroom as everyone begins to filter in the next morning. Right, Sean is in today, so I better say something. Yo, Sean. Yeah? Can I see you here first thing after school today, please? Uh, okay. And with that, he sits down. I can't help but notice. Oh, I can't help but notice his nervous expression. After the way I acted yesterday, it's obvious he knows what I want to talk about. Regardless, I need to spend the rest of the day trying to figure out how to deal with this. And then I f faint again. Oh! My lessons haven't been particularly good today. It's math. How are they good or bad? You know, x plus y equals c. a squared plus b squared equals... C squared. It, it doesn't change. I've been too busy thinking about how I'm going to approach this mess. I'm too worried about Sean. It looks like there's no more time for thinking. Hey, you wanted to see me, sir? What is this about? I can't believe he's asking this after I saw him yesterday. It's not as if he doesn't know I saw him either. I yelled at him. Either he's incredibly stupid or he thinks I'm incredibly stupid. You know what this is about, Sean? Yeah, I guess I do. Now that wasn't a reaction I was expecting. I'm going to stay calm, because the truth is, if you want to make someone mad, you don't get angry at them. The first person to raise their voice in an argument loses it. You stay calm. You have the control. So I'm going to stay calm. So why do you do it? Ah, uh, take it easy, kid. I'm not mad. That's a lie, and you know it. You know what I do is a horrible thing. You know, I, the way I think I should be able to respond is like, it may be a horrible thing, but I'm not going to get mad at you. What I'm going to do is shove your face against the chalkboard until I break your nose, and then I'm going to take your money. And I'm going to do that every day. So if you're so against bullying, why do you do it? Sean just gives a big sigh as if he's trying to sort out the fucked up mess of emotions in his head he wants to spill out. I don't care. I don't care if you have team aches, Sean. I don't care if somebody shoves you on the street. That does not give me an excuse to hurt those who are weaker than you. Okay, I'll start from the beginning. Yeah, why don't you do that? Another side from Sean. Eh, uh, eh. Uh, did you know Carl and I used to date? The kid sounds genuinely upset when he says this. Yeah, I know. Great story. Well, I really liked her. Like, really, really liked her? Uh, Sean, you better not have been the girl, who, guy who fucked with Jennifer. Are you? Are you? He's gonna be like, I've not even heard of your girlfriend. And yeah, we dated, and I wanted to impress her and shit, you know? So last year, I asked some friends of mine how I could do that. All the friends, they were a year above me. And they told me she's like a man of power who didn't stand for any shit. And the perfect way to show this was to rough up a couple of the younger kids. I want to stay calm. And you believe them? Seriously, Sean, I thought you were smarter than that. Hey, I was desperate. You have no idea how much I like this girl. This reminds me of my rejection from Jennifer, which makes the statement almost seem comical. Does it? No, no, no. Teacher Paul, you're trying to relate too much. I don't remember some point in the Scottish Paul, Scottish Jennifer story where Scottish Paul was beating up smaller people than him to get Jennifer. Regardless, I can see where this is going. You did what they said, Carla didn't like it, and she dumped your dumb ass. But if you like her half as much as you say you do, then why keep going on like this? You know she, like most normal people, doesn't approve of this kind of behavior. Well, this is horrendous, and I can tell this is gut-wrenching for Sean. I can see him physically wince because of it. I was pretty bummed out after I got dumped, and I needed to pick me up. So I started smoking. I heard someone somewhere that smoking relaxes you when you're stressed. The only problem is I needed money to buy cigarettes, because, I mean, my parents they ain't going to give me money for that. So I got back into bullying, and a vicious circle began. The more addicted I got to cigarettes, the more I needed to bully kids. And the more I bullied kids, the shittier I felt about myself, and the more I smoked. Oh, boo fucking who, princess? And that's where I am now. Well, the kid argues this case well, and I'm pretty sure he isn't lying, at least not about how he hurts. How hurt he was when Carla dumped him. Even still, what he's done is terrible. And let's not forget the whole illegal smoking deal as well. No, well, he might be 18. Uh, what's the legal age to smoke in Canada? I could go easy on him, but when I have the choice to flip out... <laughs> flip out, man! You are Sean, you had it rough, and I get that! 
but that gives you no excuse to be a dickhead to countless kids. I'm gonna take my dick and put it in your head. How would you? Oh wait, no, I don't want to do that. They might fire me. I don't give a shit about your smoke. I don't give a shit about your relationship with the old friends. And I don't give a shit about your relationship with Carla. But this bullying, it needs to stop. Or I will rip off your arms and slap you in the face with them. I don't care how, but you're going to stop. And if I hear about this game, the consequences will be a lot harder than the chat in here. Do you understand, son? He seems to be taking it all in, even if it is rather slowly. Yes, sir, crystal clear. It won't happen again. Excellent. Now get the fuck out of here. With that, he's gone. I just hope I took the right approach with him. Hey, yeah, you do. He is beating up other people and taking their shit. I'm not going to be an apologist. You know, I'm not going to be an appeaser. I'm not going to be like, it's okay, Hitler. It's okay, you took Poland. Let's talk about your feelings. No, 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 no. That is not how it's going to go. I will not put up with that shit. Not one bit. I have another seizure. Oh, faint. And the rest of the week passes rather uneventfully. And before I know it, it's Friday morning of my first week. Well, Sean's never here early. Morning, sir. Good morning, Sean. You're earlier than usual. Yeah, well, Friday mornings used to be reserved for smoking, but since Wednesday... Please tell me you didn't bring a knife to stab me. Or a gun. I see, so you haven't had any cigarettes since our talk? Nope, I decided to tell my parents everything, and they've been really supportive, buying me lots of patches and what have you. Well, that's really good. I'm, I'm proud of you, Sean. Thanks, sir. Apparently, I did the right thing. Once again, I have the seventh graders in the morning. But if the older kids are leaving, I see a sight I never thought I'd see. Hey, kid. Mm, yes. That's that's the mm, yes voice, and this is obviously hey. I want to apologize for everything I put you through. It was really terrible of me, and I'm sorry. It's okay. No, seriously, I'm sorry. I regret it. Here, you. Why don't you take this? I hope he's not giving him cigarettes. Sean pulls a twenty-dollar note from his wallet. Oh, it's probably got the queen on it or some shit. It should be about how much I took off of you. Unfortunately, I can't pay you back for all the times I beat you up, but... Oh, I can't take this. <laughs> now, please, it'll make me feel better. Sean forces the note into Tim's hand. Beat him up if he doesn't take it, Sean! <laughs> Which makes him seem very happy. I'll see you around, kid. Me, yeah, I'll see you. <laughs> Thanks. Now, hopefully Tim doesn't become a bully, doesn't continue the cycle. And as Sean leaves and Tim heads to first seat, I can honestly say I've never seen either of them happier. Wow, I'm glad I interfered in their lives. Oh, some Scottish discipline was what they needed. Chapter 2, living the high life. I think about how time has passed rather quickly, yet uneventfully, as I prepare for my Wednesday lesson with the 12th graders the week after I spoke to Sean. Sean not only seems a lot happier, but is paying a lot more attention in class as well. He's even been talking to Carla again. Ooh, I helped him get in the nookie hole. Oh, I don't want to think about that. I am just happy that what I said worked out for him. The bell brings me out of my daydream. I better get ready, because the kids will be here soon. So we have the polynomial multiplied with the exponential function, and we want to differentiate. Would anyone like to suggest a way we could go about doing this? And his hand shoots up straight, followed by a not-so-sure victor. But after that, I see a hand which doesn't normally go up. Even I have to take a moment to remember her name. J J Jessica? We have to use the product rule. Which is... F dash G plus F dash to F G dash. How about I F dash you? Oh, <laughs> I don't know what that means. Excellent. Good work, Jessica. How about Massacre? And she quickly hides back into the background. You know, now that I think about it, I never really noticed Jessica before. Wait, that's creepy that way. Now, that's a horrible thought. Like, fat things wouldn't be different at all if she didn't exist. I mean, she seems like a nice enough kid. Boy, our guy's got to get a TV or buy a book, discover a library, because he spends all his time taking, thinking about these kids. Anyway, comes to class, does she does all her homework, never really gets out of line. She's just so quiet. Uh, Jessica. Now that I think about it, I don't think I ever saw her in the cafeteria during my lunch in the f few visits. She obviously doesn't have lunch in the classroom, but where would she go and who does she talk to? Why? It's creepy. Why do I need to know? Why? What teacher is like, I need to know where this student is going. 
Actually, I do think I had a teacher like that once. I was like, you are a little too needy. I gotta go. It's slightly concerning in all honesty. Hello, I'm passing out again. I need food. Lunch bell rings and everybody begins packing up. Hey, it's my friends. Oh, God. I need to make some real friends. Hannah, Victor, and Jack take out their normal... Jack? Your name is Jack and my last name is Jackman? Are we related? Take out the normal lunchtime seats as uh, everyone else heads out of the class, including Jessica. Uh, dude, dude, don't let Jessica go. I bring out my packed lunch. I've started just having lunch in the classroom nowadays, because I'm super cool with these kids. Uh, even when I don't have any marking or lesson plans to sort out, sometimes it's nice just to chat to the students, because I have no friends in Canada. Hey, have you guys started the English assignment that's due on Friday? I haven't. Oh, I'm a teacher. I already finished it. Yeah, why do you always have to be so good at these things? I can never seem to get my head around English. Dude, that teacher's right there. <laughs> I've gotten used to Jack nowadays. Birds fly, fish swim, and everyone ignores Jack's stupid comments. It's a fact of nature. Well, if you don't mind me giving my two cents, I think you can be as good as Hannah if you put your mind to it. You're an intelligent kid. Ah, well, English isn't my strong suit. I'm much more of a mathematician. For what it's worth, Victor, I was too in real life. Uh, I know how that feels. I scraped passes in all my English classes. I needed to do that to get into maths and teaching at university, and once I got there, I avoided the subject like the plague. I actually like, really like English. Why don't you shut the fuck up, Hannah? No one cares what you like. Not that I don't like math, of course. I just quit kissing up. Uh, you like everything, right? Yeah, I know someone who likes everything. Jennifer, that giant fucking Scottish whore. She never met anything she didn't like. Fucking cheating whore! Well, yeah. Yeah, a bit of a nerd, are we? Well, at least Victor seems to appreciate my harmless jab at Hannah. I'm only kidding, Hannah. Don't be a pussy. Is that inappropriate to tell students that? No, it's true, to be honest. But it's how I am, so it's fine, right? You don't need to get your validation from me. That's a very positive outlook, Hannah. I'm a very positive person! Great story, Hannah. How about you do something for me? How about you write that into a short story? You want to see my writing? No. Then you write that into a long story. Oh, really? Then you want to read it? No. Then you fly to Hollywood, pitch it, make it a movie, and then when it's a movie, I maybe we'll watch it when it's in a cheap theater. At the time, at that, uh, as that line of conversation dries up, we all sit in silence for a while. Which makes me think of Jessica again. Oh god, I can't get a quiet student out of my head. Just who could she be hanging around with? And where? Wait, I'm jealous? Who could she be hanging out with? And where? Is she a whore like Jennifer? I don't even know her. Say, have you guys gone to your homeroom? Hey, always gone to your homeroom for lunch? Uh, well, obviously, when you first come to school, they uh, you try the cafeteria out. But when I realized how bad the food was and that everyone there is really noisy, I decided to just start eating in my homeroom. I see, are there uh, other places kids like to hang out other than the, you know, like cafeteria or their homerooms, you know, where maybe Jessica would hang out? Now that you mention it, I can't really think of anywhere else. Uh, if you don't mind me asking me, uh, asking you, uh, what made you think of asking that? I'm not sure if I should tell them about my concerns. I think I'd trust the kids who may be able to help. Oh god, this is embarrassing. Am I going to be that teacher? That talks about... Oh, I'm going to talk about Jessica. You know, Jessica, I'm just worried she's not socializing properly. She's just so quiet, and I've never seen her in the cafeteria. What has happened to me since I came to Canada? I was in Scotland, and I was eating sheep babies and caber tossing all over the place, and I had a woman. She was a whore, but still, I had a woman, and now I'm like, Hey, what's that student doing when I came to Canada? Or in here during lunch, so I was wondering where she might go. Oh, you know, I never really given it any thought. I just assumed she had friends in other classes. And to be fair, she's a bit, uh... It's not, uh... It's, it's hard not to sound nasty, but she's always been a little, um, you know, weird. Well, for what it's worth, Victor, people always called me weird growing up, too. Maybe Unique would be nicer. No, weird is weird. Either way, I'm sure she just goes to another homeroom or something if she has friends in other classes. Thanks, Hannah. Thanks. Thanks, Detective Hannah. I'm like, you know who murdered that person? Oh, I'm sure someone did it. Thanks for your help. You're not being very nice. Hannah, shut up. You know what? I hope you're right, though. I, I hope she's with someone else. Someone else? We'll return to small talk for the rest of the break. And I pass out again. Oh, my head. Really need to eat more sugar. The bell goes. 
noting the end of the day. But just as I'm getting ready to leave, the uh, an unexpected visitor comes in. Oh, it's the uh, principal or whatever. Hey, Paul, how you doing? Not bad at all, actually, yourself? Well, I'm good, thanks. Anyway, I have to ask you a favor. Don't ask me to quit creeping on the cheap students because I love creeping on the students, all right? That's what we do where I'm from. Straight to business as I see always, man, woman. Basically, I got a meeting on a Friday afternoon. That means I won't be able to cover my grade 10 chemistry class in, so I need someone to cover. It should be super easy. I thought you were the principal. Wow. I really don't know what the fuck's going on at the school. I'll give you some textbook pages to write up on the board, and they just have to do work from there. It's more of a supervision thing than anything else. I remember the last time she said anything would be easy was being a homeroom teacher. Um, and three days after that, I had to deal with the bullying underage smoker. But remember how I fixed that? Of course, I refrain from actually saying this. So do you think you'll be able to do it? Well, I am free then, but I can think of a lot of things I'd rather do than babysit 10th graders, like creep on Jessica. Uh, I won't lie. Yeah, I'll cover your damn class. Yeah, sure, I'll do it. Thanks, Paul. You're lifesaver. Seriously, thank you. No problem, man, woman. She sounds incredibly happy as she says this. When she smiles like that, I can never help but think how cute she is for a man, woman. Uh... Anyway, I'm assuming you want to get home as soon as possible. I'll see you soon, okay? Yeah, sure thing, Allison. Take it easy. I finished off packing my stuff as I head out of the classroom. But as I head down the corridor, I notice something I've never seen before. I find myself staring at a door with no entry written across it. If I had a tramp stamp, that's what it would say. <laughs> Normally, I wouldn't give this door a second glass, glance, but it's been left ajar, meaning someone is inside. What are you talking about? Main character, Teacher Paul, I do nothing but check into other people's business. I don't normally pry, but I'm going to pry for the millionth time. My curiosity gets the better of me as I open the door and go inside. I don't even look inside. Hey, it's the, the roof that's on every Let's Play uh, visual novel you've ever seen. If I was the person who drew this roof, I'd be like, I'm famous. Foo Fly- uh, Foo Foo? Ah. Uh, some Foo Fighters later, a few flighters of stairs later, I find myself on the school roof. I hope, uh... Roof. Roof. That's my Michigan coming out of me. Roof. People, <laughs> my English friend Lauren is like, it's roof! It's not roof! I'm like, what? You go on the roof. I have to say, the view from up here is incredible, particularly at this time of day. The wind ruffles my hair as I look around the roof to see who's up here. The roof! The roof! The roof is on fire! I really shouldn't be surprised to see Jessica here. She's standing, staring out at the world. Her face is tranquil, yet I can't help but see an edge of sadness to it. But then it hits me. She's standing there looking depressed at the edge of the roof after school with no one else around. Um, okay. I could yell, don't jump. Or I could say, don't be stupid, she's not going to jump. I don't think she's going to be jump. I don't think she's going to jump. Nah, it must be my overactive imagination. Sure, sure enough, she turns around to me. Uh, she turns around surprised to see me. Mr. Jackman, what are you doing here? I could ask you the same, Jessica. The door says no entry. My bus says no entry. What? It didn't lock behind me? Nope. I, I know her voice changed slightly, but I don't remember what voice said it before, so. Oh. So why are you here? This is my secret hangout spot. Does anyone else know about this? I mean, you're obviously not supposed to be up here. Oh, don't be a douche, me. Well, perhaps it's not strictly allowed. You know what else isn't strictly allowed? But my sister and I have been doing this for years and nobody seems to mind. You have a sister? Yeah, we're really close. Like, how close? She's four years older than me, meaning she left school a while ago. I see, so did you start coming up here since your sister left the school? Apparently, I grill every student I meet about their life fucking story. Now, I just come up here by myself. Oh, so you like to come by yourself? What? But uh, why do you uh, come up here? Uh, do you not have any friends? Oh, that is not a tactful question to ask anyone. Um, no, no. Even I know you don't ask someone that. Maybe I've hit a soft spot. Of course! Somebody's alone. Are you lonely and have no friends? Of course they're not going to like that. They're not going to be like, Oh, thank you for pointing out the fact I am alone forever and sad. It's not like I haven't tried. I just... Maybe if you put out more, Jessica... Things are easier this way. Besides, I'm happier like this. 
I can't help but think she's lying. Lying whore, just like the Jennifer. I bet right now Jennifer's gangbanging a whole football team. And by that I mean soccer team for Americans and Canadians and Australians, if they want to know. Uh, really? It's better like this? You're alone? It's okay, sir, really. Anyway, I'm gonna go home now. Do you mind uh, going down first so I can lock the door? Well, if you're sure. We walked together out of the school and went our separate ways after that. Still, now that I know Jessica has socializing problems for sure, I feel the need to help her somehow. Oh my god, I had a teacher like this in real life who did not know how to keep her nose out of other people's businesses. I'll save everybody! Yeah, how about you just leave me alone? The only problem is she doesn't seem willing to accept the help. Then leave her alone! Like, uh, you, what are we going to do, hang out with her? She's a student. That's not appropriate. We, we can't force people to be friends with her. If she wants some space, let's respect her space. How do you even help somebody who's going to refuse? You respect that they like privacy. I guess that's exactly what I have to figure out. How I can button and change her life. But I guess I'm going to have to do that when I wake up from sleeping. We'll do that on Thursday. Thursday, Thursday. Titty titty Thursday. <laughs> All right, everybody, I would like to thank you all for watching and hanging out with me as I play Stillwater Creek, and I will see you all next time.